I was till I put on the mask. If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. My name is TMI. I am the Mass Investor. Thank you guys very much for tuning in right now. No matter what time it is, no matter where you guys are, I do appreciate you, you, and you for being here. There is a large institution in the market, and they call themselves BlackRock. They have over uh, you know ten trillion dollars worth of assets. But as of recently, along lines of short sellers, who you know short sellers aren't necessarily the biggest fish in the market, but BlackRock, on the other hand. They are. BlackRock funds hit by 17 billion in losses on Russian exposure. Damn, damn, damn. This guy's face kind of says it all right now. This is the chief executive officer of, uh, of BlackRock. So take a look at this article here from FT.com. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, has taken about 17 billion in losses on its Russian securities holding because of the attack in Ukraine. Clients that held more than 18.2 billion in Russian assets at the end of January, the firm said, but shuttered markets and worldwide sanctions imposed after Russian President Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine have made the vast majority on South leading BlackRock to mark them down sharply. And BlackRock's not the only one. There were several other institutions that got hit with billions of dollars of losses. Take a look at this. Other large asset managers, I'm just going to skip down here just so you guys can see that, are, are also having to write down billions of dollars in exposure. PIMCO, for example, held at least $1.5 in sovereign debt, about $1.1 in debts on Russia via credit default swap market for the war. Now, swap markets, we've heard this before. I just want to hear swaps. I think about the guy Randall Cornett. But We'll get back to this. Ashmore and Western Asset Funds also have exposure in the Russian debt, according to Morningstar and Janus Henderson at a much lower level. So the U.S. banks, Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan announced plans on Thursday to pull their business out of Russia, saying that they were acting in compliance with the government's instructions. People, it seems like there is going to be continuous losses being taken by institutions. First, we covered the short sellers that have been seeing the worst month since June 2021, and now we're covering other institutions that are having to pull their assets out of different places and mark them up to zero. What does this mean for you guys? If you are currently holding long assets in this market, and you have long-term investments, although the market does seem bearish, although we have been on a bullish run, although the narratives are always going shifting between we're going to see a crash or we're going to see the biggest rally or the crash is over or the bomb's in or things are priced in, relax, okay? Long-term thinking is definitely for the win. If you do have long-term investments, not financial advice, guys, but 5, 10, 15, 30 years, those are the goals for long-term investments. As long as you're not having to mark things up as zero if that were invested in Russia or as long as you're not going short on a very short-term play because you think the market's going to crash, you will be okay. And actually, you are probably outperforming several different institutions out there, guys. Another check in the favor of retail. I think we're doing just fine. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, guys. If you have not yet, smash the like button. Feel free to press subscribe. Thank you guys very much for listening.